Howdy folks, my name is Terry, and today I'm going to show you my color scheme for the Starks from A Song of Ice and Fire starter set. All of the paint colors are in the description, but you can use comparable paint tones if that's what you have on hand. Just make sure you're using a high quality miniature paint uh, and you'll be good to go. This is a beginner friendly tutorial that's also optimized for speed, so we're focusing on basic techniques to get these guys done. There's a lot of minis in that starter box and to build out your ranks and get gaming, Getting a method down is key. This method also works really well for batch painting. So if you're looking for something to you know, get full trays done, this is a great way to get them done. Now we're gonna start with a primed black model. I use black because the majority of the model is metal and dry brushing metallics onto black is super easy. It also makes it so that if I miss a spot on miniature, usually where I can't reach my brush, that places where a shadow would be and that's where it would be black anyway. So using a black base is really forgiving. We're going to start with a dark copper tone. We'll take some of that paint straight from the bottle and put on a dry palette or surface. We'll pick some of that up with our dry brush and we'll remove 90 to 95% of that paint onto a paper towel. We're going to then bring that brush across the model, working against the texture. In this case, because chainmail is textured in all directions, I'm working in small circles. My go-to dry brush is the Eyes Lips Face Contour Brush. It's a makeup brush for dry brushing, and I've made a video on why I love it so much, and I'll link it in the cards. It's just a great dry brush that imparts a finish that isn't chalky. After layering on that darker undertone, we'll do the same with silver paint. For the Starks, I wanted to give them a worn-in metallic finish, and this is my favorite way to accomplish it. The end result looks like burnished pewter, and the warmth of that brown tone doesn't read as brown on the miniature, but it imparts that, that warm, worn feel and gives the silver some depth. After that, I'll paint the denim blue onto the cloak. Now, for this, we're thinning the paint on my palette. Now, I'm using a wet palette to the consistency of like coffee cream. It gives me coverage while not hiding the details. You may need to do a couple coats depending on the pigmentation level of your paint, uh, but the paint I'm using is, is pretty solid after two coats. I'm not going to worry about the inside of the cloak. If I can't reach my brush in there, your eyes will not see it when it's down on the table. So it's kind of like trying to paint the bottom of your face. If nobody will see it, don't do it unless it makes you obscenely happy and instead focus your time and intention on things that people can see. Now we're gonna make a dark gray wash to shade the cloak. I'm using great coat gray with a touch of black just to darken it a little bit more. I'm gonna add water to this paint mix until it has a consistency of, well, water. It's going to be really thin, maybe even uncomfortably thin, but we're not looking for coverage here. I'll then add the tiniest drop of dish soap to break the surface tension of the paint so it'll pool in the recesses. It also works well if you put a dollop of soap onto your palette and then pick up a tiny bit with the tip of a brush. Now the paint will basically collect in the recesses and that's where the pigments will collect and that's how it'll show up. So that's why we're using such a thin mix and we'll just apply that to the cloth. The wash will give us an idea of where the shadows are and help with the gradation. We'll go back in with a paint mix that matches the color of the wash, but thin down to like a little bit thinner than skim milk. A little bit thicker than the wash, but not so much that it looks opaque when it's on the model. We'll then use that mix to darken up the shadows so they look a little bit crisper and the sculpt you know, is somewhat softer in the detail. True scale models often are, and so those sharper shadows will help define the creases a little bit more. Now I'll thin down that paint mix a little without using soap and apply it as a thin layer to add some of the shadows on the shields around the outlines and borders. It'll help make the other details like the dire wolf pop on the shield. Using that same mix across the miniature will also help bring some harmony to the miniature. The shadows having the same color makes the miniature look like it's lit by the same light source. Darker colors make things look more recessed, so I'll paint around things that I want to pop forward and emphasize. Finally, we'll paint on some fine nail details. The brown strapping on the bags and on the boots are going to be a detail that pops uh, because the strapping goes right over the shoulder on top of the mini. So they're a detail people will see. So take your time on it. Finally, we'll put a wash on all the brown. I'm not mixing one because there are a number of fantastic brown washes straight out of the bottle and I'm lazy. I did the captain for this video, but you can easily use these techniques for the rank and file guys as well. There you are. There are, of course, a ton of more details you can pick out. I 
like to add to my miniatures as I find more details, but this is a great starting point. That said, don't stress about the details. When you've got your mini on a table like this, nobody will notice the minor mistakes. Heck, you probably can't tell which of these guys here have their eyes painted or where I might have missed a part on their cloaks. Paint what makes you happy. Paint in whatever colors make you happy. These are your miniatures after all. Speaking of details, I'll be doing a separate tutorial on painting faces for the guys in the starter set box because the sculpts are softer and if you want the basic facial details, I'll give you some easy shortcuts as well as some super easy techniques for eyes. I'll also be doing a basing tutorial for these minis since it's pretty easy to take these guys off the base with an X-Acto knife. Thanks to my awesome patrons on Patreon who are supporting me in making videos like this. If you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also follow my painting progress on the social media channels linked in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get notified. The Lannister Basic tutorial is already in the hopper and you can expect that soon. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I will see you soon.